call this meeting of the Ohio County Municipal <coughs> Court to order. I'm going to ask Justin Cowan to lead us in a prayer and a pledge to the flag. If you bow your heads. Um, Lord, uh, thank you as always, first and foremost, for all the blessings that you've provided to us. Your grace is overwhelming. Your love is everlasting. We ask that you be with all those that are sick and dealing with these COVID issues. We ask that you be with the magistrates and the judge executive today as they take on uh, the various issues uh, of, of a lot of importance. Um, we ask that you that you uh, uh, that we act in, in your will, and for it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before you have the. Uh, uh, September 28th uh, minutes. Uh, need a motion to approve those. So moved. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second with Joe Bond. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Any corrections, discussions, or anything to be added to the minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like Sam. The minutes are approved. Before you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. So, motion by Larry Kim. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Uh, any discussion on the bills, claims, and payments, and transfers? Any discussion? There's no discussion. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Post like sign. Uh, the uh, bills are paid. We have uh, the clerk's not here. So we have her uh, uh, September report, financial report. So move subject to uh, all. Motion by Larry Cowan, second by Joe Barnes. Uh, any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Uh, that is proof subject to uh, We have a, we we have the, uh, this is first reading. Isn't this second reading of budget amendment? Second. Second, this is first reading, which I'm sorry. This is second reading. This is the budget amendment that y'all did last meeting. Last meeting. So we need a motion to approve the second reading of this order. I did have to remove the million dollars. They wouldn't let me admit that in until it was approved. So I have motion for so second reading. You want to amend it in? We'll, we'll have to when it gets we'll approved. We'll have to do another reading then. Uh, another another budget amendment. So moved. Motion, Sam Small. Second. Second, second Jason Bullock. Uh, any discussion? Roll call. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Um, Larry, uh, Count, uh, you two, uh, you're up. Okay. I want to entertain a motion for resolution for the uh, American Rescue Plan Act, our budget will call it. Uh, for the items listed on this sheet here. It's available anybody that wants to, uh, wants to look at Second. Motion by Larry Count, second Sam Small. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Uh, since we get the resolution, let's roll call it. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Uh, well, you, I guess we, you make that appointment for the other people to come in and speak by the next meeting or one of them? Oh, we'll do one at a time. One at a time? Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Resolution 2022-17. TDA. Who's, oh, the IDA. Who's going to explain that one? 
It's, it's, it's just a resolution we have to do every year with, okay. with regard to designation of who will be our IDA. Okay. Would someone make a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion with Jason Bullock. I'll second. Second by Joe Barnes. Um, again, it's a revolution. Re a revolution. A res that's an next step. A resolution. So let's roll call. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Cam. Yes. Morfield? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. And as you remember, uh, last uh, meeting, we did do a uh, first reading on the admin code amendment. Uh, and uh, we didn't get unanimity on that. Don't ask me to say that word again. But we did. So it's up for discussion. If uh, it, since it's second reading, there could be a uh, slight change made to it if that was someone's request to do. Well, if, if it would give us, uh, uh, I just think that you uh, have an entity. I just think, Judge, that, that uh, the issue that was in, in question, I think, uh, about the GED or whatever, ought to be just completely dropped from the uh, administrative code. And anybody that has the experience and knowledge of uh, doing any individual task or whatever the employee is capable of doing ought to be uh, ought not to be tied down to his whether or his education. I, I'd agree with that. So I'll put that for motion I'll that we amend the administrative code to to allow that. Well, it would be a change on the second reading. Okay. Okay. And so this. When we make the change, we make the change now, and, and when we pass this, then it'll become uh, it'll become the way. I'll yeah. second that. And I think it'd been noted that the reason this was put in the beginning is because we were looking for the work ready program in the state of Kentucky, and it required stuff like this to, to, to become a work ready community. Well, work ready communities kind of fell by the wayside, and it's really not a thing anymore. So it's not needed, and we're kind of short handed on staff as and far as. And keep in mind, uh, our leadership team, formerly we call it the department heads, and uh, myself, or whoever the judge of take the as they put one up, you can still use that for consideration for certain jobs. Sure. If you had if you had three that didn't have a GED and one did, and that was the only thing that changed the game, uh, it could be done, or, or certain things in certain offices that required it. So I don't think this is going to hurt us any. And like you said, we did have it in the beginning for the uh, uh, to try to become work ready. And now then, no one, no one coming soliciting uh, here has asked forever uh, if we're work ready. Have they, Jody? Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it hurts us to have the work ready uh, certification out there. So it, we just don't even need to focus on that at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a thing of the past. And like you said, the it's not just us, everybody's having employment problems trying to find somebody, so. Okay, we will change the wording in this ordinance to reflect it so we don't have to start over, okay? The change is done how, to second review. How are you wording that? We were just uh, gonna strike it. Basically, there. there'd be no GED requirement, but it could be considered on each individual job. It could be required for a certain job, but not across the board to be a county. So how are you gonna put that in there? How are you gonna put it? Just to, exactly like that. I would suggest that you say uh, education level or experience um, in there rather than specifically GED or high school diploma. Education levels all across are really irrelevant if you have somebody that's experienced in the job unless the job, unless you need to be a heart surgeon and you have to be, you know, licensed. It's, uh, it's hard to find people who have the education that also have the experience. That would be my suggestion to you. Well, there's certain departments, Jody, that it, it, uh, if we, as we've got the administrative code now, it limits the workers that can came in and well qualified, experienced, exactly. knowledgeable, that's able to do the job. Exactly. So, so that's why I would put or, if I were you, education level or. Experience. And, and or experience yeah, and qualifications. Good. Okay. We'll do that, and that way, uh, if somebody's got qualified candidates, if they don't have. And we're going to strike all the writing in the red out. Oh, I always, always.
always thought it was ironic yes, sir. that we required our employees to have a GED or high school education, and there's only a single one of them. Well, actually, it's going to strike some of them. It's actually going to strike some of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, this will make it official, but nevertheless, it's, we're going to have it read <coughs> and then give it all of you to the next meeting. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll call that. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morview? Yes. Small? No. Bullock? Yes. Okay. Uh, sure. Sheriff, sure you're up. You, you might tell us how much money you brought in lately so you can, before you start asking to spend. <laughs> yeah. We'll let Ann tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we might start out tonight with the, uh, the bid on the, uh, the tower, the radio towers and the repeaters. Uh, Charlie has been taking care of most of that for us. Uh, we did get a bid from BEI. We have a representative with BEI here tonight, Troy. He's here with us. Uh, any questions that you might have, uh, he's open to any questions, and we're going to see if we can stump him on any of them. To maybe uh, yeah. oh, see if we can rattle him a little bit. <laughs> well, you Mayor Larry would start that. Y'all want me to go ahead and open it? <coughs> uh, you can be oh, open while I'm uh, asking Charlie and the Sheriff something. Um, of course, we know we appointed y'all to the committee to look into this. Is this going to take care of our problems for a while? Well, Judge, I think this will get us started. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's going to cure every problem that we have, but we'll have three. We have one repeater right now, and I've got spots that deputies can't talk. Right. Uh, they can't get their transmission back through to the dispatch center. We'll have three when this goes up. We'll have one at Fordsville one at Centertown and one at Kirk Lane, and that kind of covers a broad area. We've we kind of had Troy to do a study of where those would be the best sites, and uh, that's where we're having the most trouble, uh, Centertown and Fordsville. Centertown will get us a little more coverage down Rockport, uh, and then where we're at with the Kirk Lane will get us more toward Horse Branch up around in that area, and then of course Fordsville, Hill Mitch, Pleasant Ridge, kind of up that way. So uh, we, uh, you know, we we just want to make sure that our officers are safe and that that we have the, the capability to receive and and transmit to those officers. Uh, this also includes in-car repeaters. So not only do we have the repeaters that are set up, but each car will have uh, capability of turning their portable, basically into a five watt, from five watt to a 50 watt uh, signal, if you will. So uh, those repeaters will help us drastically. With this system, we can come in later and add another repeater if needed in the next year or two years or five years or whatever. Uh, this system would be compatible with extra repeaters that we could put up. So if there were problems, we could try to come up with some more money later on to have a better system. But we think this is going to take us a long way and, and fix 90% of our problems. We've got about 75% coverage right now. And uh, like I said, I think it'll bump us way up and help get those transmissions from those officers in to dispatch where they need help the most. This system maintenance, I'm looking at it on the back page here, what do we use for our maintenance right now on the one we have? I mean, do we not? We've got a guy called Charlie Shields that <laughs> does that maintenance. What happens now is every time something goes on, we call and Troy and them comes down and they charge us. Yeah. And this is a maintenance agreement plan. I ain't for sure if it was added in on the only thing that's added in on the bid, was it, Troy? It's not. It's an additional. It's yeah, an additional, additional. And that way they wouldn't charge us. I mean, we is can do the math. 26 Okay, on, on average, what do we spend? Well, we would have to do the math because I didn't know that was in there. So we have to do the math to figure out that. How much is it annually? $26,263 annually. Oh, we don't spend that. I, I'm not sure that it would be that no. much. Uh, no. All right. 
we, we could look at that later on and maybe see what you guys yeah. think. But uh, our main concern was to get this other through and, and get that plugged in. And Charlie's been helping with the site up there. We've had some issues with the building. Uh, we had to rebuild the building up there and move and rewire. And it's all in decent shape right decent now. Shape. So we, we think we'll be okay with those. To follow up on this maintenance, uh, I guess yes. my question is, what yes. type of, uh, this, these new repeaters and everything, what kind of guarantee, and how long is guarantee, or anything like that? Troy, Mike, Troy. Troy, you want to come up? <clears throat> this is the guy you yeah. throw the darts at. Uh, here, right? here comes some darts, <laughs> Troy. <laughs> so what's the question? The question was that uh, we were talking about maintenance, annual maintenance, or whatever, but I want to know how much these repeaters and things of that nature, what kind of guarantee have they got? You shouldn't have to have any maintenance to mount anything for well, whatever the guarantee is. That's what I'm asking. It's the, okay, the repeaters come with a near uh, manufacturer's one year warranty. And sitting along with the, the server that's going to be involved with this, and there's a, a net clock that's involved. They all have a one year's manufacturer's warranty. Okay, now on your maintenance, is that when does that maintenance start? After the first year. Uh, do what now? After the first year. Okay, so everything's guaranteed 100% first year mm -hmm. and make it starts after that at 26 right. If we decide to take it. If we decide to take it. Right. So, I, I, am I taking the day of the order or the day of the install? The, when, it, when it starts? Yeah. When it's installed. When it's installed. When it's installed. When it's installed. So, probably like first January 1st, got one year, and then after that would be 2024. What's the life expectancy on these uh, transmitters and repeaters? I mean, I've got some that's been on the air for 15 years. The reason that the reason I asked that is because looking on down the road, if we've had pretty good service and they've uh, they worked well or whatever, it may uh, they make us consider we want whether we want to do the maintenance in there. Okay. Well, you said we, got well we could go ahead and, and, and buy that and then look at the maintenance once we figure out too what we spend. You know. Yeah, we, I mean we could but you go ahead buy the equipment. The end, the beginning of the year anyway. Go ahead and get the equipment in cars, oh, yeah. then we'll table the maintenance for one year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would just, I would just uh, the repeater we've got right now, Larry, has been here as long as I've been around here. I'm not sure when it was put up. David Thompson. Uh, as a matter of fact, when they, that's when that fire service did all theirs, the EMS got theirs, we got EMA, we all got that right at that same time. Right? Now, uh, Troy, is Tracy right that it takes it from five, mega, uh, five watts to 50 watts? Right, the, the vehicle repeaters, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much a... Uh, box that sits in the radio that connects to the mobile radio in the car. So the officer turns the channel and they're, they're portable and then talks to the car through the mobile and to the system and then vice versa. It goes back in through the car and back out to the portal. And I know, I, I don't expect 100%, AT&T can't even provide you 100%. Right. Those are dead areas, but okay, I, I don't have any problem. And Larry, the biggest problem, I hate to say it, but it's up there in the Portugal area. Yeah, but what that does, as long as the deputy's within about a mile or a mile and a half of their car, it turns this, which is four and a half watts to five, turns that into the where the wattage is in a car and typically it's around 50 watts. Yeah, that should make a substantial difference. I, I witnessed that, I guess yeah. about two weeks ago, the deputy was trying to talk in his radio down there in Centertown. And he was picking up just fine, but his reply wasn't coming back to the station. It took the fourth time. And, you know, there wasn't anything serious going on then, but you can imagine it coming up. I also this have, to eliminate this. So. Speaking of Centertown, Joe, uh, I spoke with the, uh, the mayor of Centertown, and they have uh, given us permission to use their tower down there on the water tower to put one of those repeaters up. So that and uh, the Fordsville water tower, I think Charlie's been working with them a little bit on that. So I don't see an issue there. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to them, but that'll help us save to, to erect a tower would be very costly. So with that sharing note, we could save some money on that. Too. I would move to uh, proceed. And it was already, the funding was voted on in the ARPA fund, so yeah. it's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it gets on the offer right hand. Yeah, offer right hand. Motion by Larry Cannon. Second by Joe. Yes, Joe. Go Barn. To accept the bid. Thank you, Charlie. Of uh, 
You don't need these back, Charlie. No, y'all keep them. Yeah, one of these is a master copy. It's got everything. Uh, You'll have my copy. Sam's got the master copy. Don't have enough. Don't have the prices in it. It's got everything in it. Where my camera? It's in a lot more. Does it have the amount? Yeah. 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 Uh, Tracy, that wasn't a build maintenance. That was okay. A uh, now, no, just uh, that wasn't a build maintenance. We've been discussing as we go. So, yes. Miranda, let's go ahead and do a roll call. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cow? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bullock. yes. That, uh, that's done. The uh, bids are accepted for the radio. Uh, Sheriff? Uh, next, you have in front of you a folder I gave you on the uh, bids on the vehicles that we uh, put out. Uh, actually, we uh, were having some issues getting those pickup trucks that we decided that we were going to use. Um, I was getting a little worried that with the supply of the vehicles that we weren't going to be able to get what we needed. Um, so I issued another bid out on some SUVs. <clears throat> so, uh, if you will notice that uh, bid page in there that has the uh, Sheriff's Office heading on it, uh, and it says bids received. We had three bids, one from BF Evans and Livermore for 39.1 on a, uh, a Ford Explorer. John Jones from Indiana bid a 2021 Dodge Durango for 39.6. And I'm leaving off the, dollar, the small dollar amounts. Uh, Don Franklin in Somerset bid a 21 Dodge Durango for 34.2. So um, we would ask you to accept those bids for um, the two. Um, actually, I guess, Judge, I, the uh, one of those would be the insurance money we have that uh, you all supplied us for the difference of when we told the car. Uh, one of those would be coming from the drug fund, which we would pay for out of our drug fund. And then the others, uh, I, I guess, Judge, what you and I talked about, um, yes. just need to okay, I guess, to, to go ahead and do whatever on those two. Yeah, I'd say, uh, I, I, if this bid don't cover it, yeah. I'd say you run an ad in the... Uh, uh, I think we should be covered under this last bid that we have. I'll double check it, but if not, we can run whatever we here. And this is the second one. Tracy, so, on, on, this, on this one bid, the Don Franklin, where it says uh, 34209 on uh, uh, yeah. each, we're a total of the 68, 418? Yes. Okay. The, there's this other Don, and it says POC, yes, sir. For POC, and then we got this other sheet that says a total of forty-one thousand seven hundred seventy-nine dollars. Yes. So what we the the Durangos, the twenty-one Durango with a V8 all-wheel drive, they're thirty-four two. They've got one Durango sitting up there that's a twenty-one V8 or a, I'm sorry, a twenty-one V6 engine for thirty-one eight. I think is what it was. So we actually have the two that are the V8s are at the 34209. 34209. You follow me? Yeah, it, it I lost you. No, it just looks like on this one. Okay, so I see now. And so is it anticipated then that the uh, either one of these the because this this the first bit shows after the POC. It looks like everything included 41779 and this other one doesn't have the POC, so it looks like these could be just a little bit more, but still probably the lowest bid. Yeah, he, he was the lowest bid, uh, Don Franklin. If you'll notice on that, uh, uh, where I have my letterhead heading that Ohio County Sheriff's Office at the top. The first page. And then has a badge on it. Yeah. There, those are the three quotes we got from the V8 motor. Dodge Durango. Don Franklin was the cheapest at thirty-four two oh nine, and they and it showed they list as two separately, so I'm sure they got two, correct? Yes, they got. As a matter of fact, they have three. They have a V six yeah. up there for yeah. the thirty. They got two of the V eight. Yes. 
So Total 68 for 18? Yes. For both of them, yeah. Yes. And the funding like and he told me, he said when we come back, they'll be higher because Dodge is doing away with their government pricing, even on the pickups we've been buying, or you guys have been buying through the county. Uh, he said seven, eight thousand dollars higher than the next one we order. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's why we kind of want to jump on these. He told me that these would be five thousand dollars higher after the 21 sold. He had to order 22s and they're going to go up five thousand dollars a piece. So. Be the first thing it didn't go up. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we need approval on this, even though we've approved it in the court before. This, I guess, is actually for him to go ahead and get them. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase. And I guess this motion by Jason Bullock. I'll second. Second by Joe Barnes. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Joe, uh, Joe Barnes to. Uh, Does Ann have to cut the and Ann needs yeah, to be able and, to write the check? Yes, to uh, allow Ann to cut, uh, cut the check for a total of, uh, on two vehicles, for a total of 68,000. 418. 418. And one of these vehicles, so people will know, is it's, it's one of your insurance claim vehicles. Yes, that we, yes. We you guys in. made the difference up yeah. out of that uh, insurance yeah. claim and that we had. And the other one for your drug fund. Yeah. Yes, and we're, we're paying for the other one out of the drug fund. I just sold some of that surplus, so we wanted to turn some of that motor money back over into vehicles. Did you do pretty good on it? Uh, yeah, we've done really good. Uh, we had some trucks that brought really good money uh, that we screened, and they were free of charge. They didn't cost us anything, and we had probably $100,000 worth of uh, trucks that we sold out there. And, uh, still working on one or two we have left. And, we screened. and, and, one, and, and uh, the money he has in it, which comes to drug fund, he finds one of these cars. Yes, yes. So uh, is there any further discussion? <laughs> Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. That's done. And I believe you got one more thing. One more, Judge, and I'll leave you alone. Damn. Uh, I'm meeting with you. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got this packet. Yeah, the, uh, the Penny Raw Narcotics yes. uh, agreement that I sent you at the last meeting, uh, I just was asking you for your vote tonight on that. Uh, Director Thompson was going to be here and, and uh, with me tonight, but he had some issues, some uh, family issues uh, with, uh, with some family matters, uh, and he couldn't be here. So uh, if, if you all would, uh, if there's any questions that you have, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, our, our drug problem here has been overwhelming. It seems like that when this COVID thing hit, um, our, our drug use went through the roof. Um, I, I was just overwhelmed, understaffed, as every sheriff I'm sure in the county and the state was. Um, we, we're, we have a shortage of officers. The state police have shortages. Uh, when I first came into office, I aimed for the state police to help us a lot, and they had a, a uh, uh, narcotics unit, and they've been shorthanded talked to the captain at post and he's told me that they they don't have enough men and women to fill those positions so uh, this is just another avenue uh, that we can combat drugs and, and together and, and make a difference here I think uh, David was the former sheriff here uh, he and I get along fine we're good friends we have one goal in mind and that is to, to eradicate the drugs here in Ohio County he lives here, he's a citizen of this county, and uh, I feel like that he's, he's one of the best people that we could team up with to combat this drug problem. So uh, I'm just asking for a vote on it to, to okay it and to join up forces with them. They will supply me $11,200 for uh, salary to go towards uh, one of my deputies. I, I made it clear to them that I couldn't be having my deputy to be in other counties all the time, and he assured me that he would only call for that officer when, when needed. This officer will be sworn in through the Penny Rod Narcotics, so he will have that jurisdiction throughout those counties that they cover. Um, but uh, he assured me he wouldn't pull him 
unless he act absolutely needs him. We've already worked with them out on the parkway on a case that we had that connected together. We made an arrest out there. Uh, we found five pounds of methamphetamine that was moving through our county. And uh, with about, I think they told me about a street value, maybe around $8,000 or so. Uh, but I, I really think that this will be a good thing for the county to help us clean up the drugs here. And I think the more the merrier on the the force to fight it. Uh, it does cost us money to join that. It cost me about $8,000 a year to, to join Penny Raw Narcotics, but I'll take that money from my drug fund. It won't cost uh, you guys out of the county money anything. I'll pay that through the drug fund. So um, I appreciate if you consider it. And so moved, Judge. Motion by Larry Kim, second by Joe Barnes to join the. Uh, Kitty Rowell, uh, uh, drug task force. I, also, uh, Justin else? and I have looked it over and uh, we've looked over that contract and we didn't see any issues. We can opt out with a 30 day notice. So, uh, so yeah, if you could just add to the motion to allow Tracy to sign it, we have reviewed the contract. And, 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 and the judge as well. Me too. Tracy, yeah. Tracy, are you thinking a few months maybe? Yeah, the judge and Tracy give us a report on how that's going? Uh, yes, on. certainly. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've, my, this new officer that I've hired, he is doing only drug interdiction. So you'll see the black Tahoe running around and he's making stops. We, we purchased a, a narcotics uh, uh, canine through our drug fund. Uh, we've spent about $11,000 on that, sent him off to be trained, our officer with the dog. So. I'm excited. Uh, he's already recovered a lot of drugs, and but I'll be glad to give you a report. That'd be that'd be good. Yeah. Uh, appreciate it. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's go ahead and roll call that, Miranda. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Cam. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. You want to go ahead and? Uh, I'm sorry. I could have brought it over she, there. She's got the. I just signed that one. You need me to sign that one too? Well, no. I guess I'll sign hers. Well, hold on. You want to do it here? I'll give you an official copy. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you all again. Appreciate it. Mm. Uh, next, I believe we have our. Uh, well, I want to do one Let's real quick thing. Uh, even though you, I think you uh, met them, I want to introduce two people to you very quickly. Two new uh, county employees. Of 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 course. Uh, Jerry, you have to tell me your last name again. Yeah. Got Jerry. He's the new maintenance man for this building in the courthouse. Uh, and uh, you, uh, you met Jimmy Cantrell while ago. Jimmy's right here. They came to the first meeting as employees of the county, and we're really proud that they did, and we're glad to have new people on board. Go. So I'm just doing an annual update for you guys. I'm calling it an annual update, but it's been a while. We had COVID, uh, and we've been talking so much in closed session that I didn't feel like you wanted to hear my voice that much. But uh, I'll give you guys an overview. Some of it's not necessarily 2021, but stuff that you might want to know, um, and I'll be as quick as I can about it. So some of the job creation stuff that we've accomplished uh, recently, Connected Nation, our virtual assistant training, graduated and found gainful employment, remote employment for eight students. Uh, the wages are between eight, uh, 15 and 18 dollars an hour for those uh, employees now. They're working remotely here in the county for companies all over the world. 
Um, we have two more people that we can train out of the grant funds that we have uh, currently, so we are still looking for two more applicants for that uh, program. Manufacturing expansions, of course we have the WPT, uh, they've done two expansions in the last 12 months, their work, one of them is underway now. Um, ICAST is expanding and Dunaway Timber, we've just started working with Dunaway Timber on uh, state incentives for their expansion. Uh, loans from the revolving loan fund, of course we had the MIGKIP loan, sorry, the MIGKIP loan, McGann loan, uh, Tamerlane, 396 off-road and uh, the burden loan for the drive-in. So those are the loans we've done and the job creation things that we've done directly. If you can go to the next slide. We've had 12 manufacturing leads, uh, serious manufacturing leads within uh, 2021. If you, you can just look at the slide there and see what those um, industries have looked like for us. It's mostly vehicle parts, uh, food and beverage. Uh, we had one window tinting company and a solar panel manufacturer that was interested in uh, Ohio County. So those are the types of industries we're looking at. To address the need for electricity, uh, we have met with green energy producers, engineering teams, and utility partners. We secured the $600,000. Uh, hopefully that will be $300,000 after the uh, PDI grant if we're approved for that grant. For the expansion of 9.5 megawatts, we, we have proposed a direct power purchase agreement to serve uh, heavy power users that could be done quicker than expanding um, all the way from the Paradise plant. Uh, those are some things I'll talk to you guys about eventually in a closed session. Um, not tonight, because I won't do that to you. We uh, landed a solar power plus battery plant um, that was proposed for bluegrass crossings in conjunction with one of our other employers in the county um, who is interested in solar, and that was denied by Britta, unfortunately. Jody, we were supposed to have Joe and I was supposed to meet with some people. Uh, has that been set up yet? Well, you guys are supposed to meet with me, um, and uh, I talked to the judge, and I think somebody was out of town last week, whatever. So, uh, Greta did meet yesterday, but I, I would like for us to go ahead and meet and at some okay. point and move as forward as we can with whatever. Well, once you set that up as soon as you can and try to get Bob or Travis in there too. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I just, if you can help me to set that up, I'm we'll not sure that. I have everybody's contact. We'll I don't, was it you and yeah, I, I think I've got both of you on there, so we'll, we'll set that up. Okay. So our workforce story, um, I did include some information in the packet that you guys have up there, but we'll go over that in a second just briefly. Uh, we completed a workforce attraction video aimed to attract millennials and Gen Zers to Ohio County because we found uh, in the United States currently that millennials and Gen Zers are uh, kind of selecting their communities before they are their jobs. So if we can attract uh, and retain our younger folks in Ohio County or to Ohio County, um, then we'll have a workforce built up and it's, it's kind of opposite of what the past, what history has looked like where you find a job and then move to your community. Most of that's because of remote work, but uh, that was the direction of that video and I'll play it for you guys in a minute. Uh, we conducted a workforce study to show our labor market potential based on wage scales. That's also uh, in your paperwork there, and I'll go over that a little bit with you all in a minute. We launched the OCDA YouTube channel as guided by the International Economic Development Council, who tells us that uh, most of those millennials and Gen Zers are now going to YouTube to look for jobs and look for communities. So if we're not on YouTube, we're not visible. So we've launched that, that YouTube channel with those videos uh, available there, and we're promoting that. Um, we compiled our labor market data to show our actual labor market target uh, targeting large high wage, large and high wage industries um, because we know that's where we can pull our workforce into. Um, we updated the KCEB project managers and uh, on our labor market area, which led to an increase of RFIs. Uh, so that's the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development. Our project managers at the cabinet are now aware and they did ask us to do, to, uh, do that workforce study. So we've sent them that information and um, now hopefully that will help us to attract the businesses that are suited for our workforce here. Okay, next slide. Uh, assisting local businesses, we held a manufacturing workforce solutions meeting where seven of our local manufacturers were briefed on the labor force, 
generational applicant needs, uh, HR solutions for recruitment and retention, internship and apprenticeship resources, as well as funding and job training resources like the on-the-job training and internship programs that are available through the Kentucky Career Centers, which pay 50% or even up to 100% of the wages of those employees uh, during their training period. We connected our local sheriff's department with state resources for apprenticeship programs. We had that meeting today. He's already gone, but we did have that meeting today. Um, we held the mayor's meeting uh, with all the mayors in Ohio County to update and educate our local governments on grad and OCEA resources for their community. Next slide is me bragging about myself, which I don't like to do, but here we go. Uh, in 2019, I completed the local economic development uh, certificate course at the University of Rotterdam, Germany, the community and economic development uh, certification from the University of Kentucky, the foreign direct investment and exporting from the Oklahoma State University in conjunction with the International Economic Development Council, economic development ethics from the International Economic Development Council, which I currently serve on their ethics and bylaws committee for um, the Kentucky Association of Economic Development. Uh, in 2020, I completed the te technology-led economic development course through Oklahoma University with, in conjunction with IEDC, managing economic development organizations through Oklahoma University, uh, economic development credit analysis, real estate development and reuse, business retention and expansion, economic development strategic planning, lead generation and business intelligence training which was through research FDI, which was our lead generation partners. Um, I'm telling you all of that because uh, in my evaluation, it was questioned whether or not we were doing the necessary training. So I want you guys to all be up to date that we are constantly and continuously keeping up with the trainings that are available uh, and necessary for us to do effective economic development in Ohio County. And the next slide. Uh, Christina completed the, the Community and Economic Development uh, basic course through University of Kentucky. Uh, Christina being our executive assistant at OCDA. In 2020, she completed the lead generation and business intelligence training along with me. Um, okay, we have two up there. The next one is also the basic training. She did that in 2019, not 2020. The High Performance Leadership Master Certificate through NACO Professional Development Academy. She completed that. And she's also done the digital works through Connected Nation um, virtual assistant training work. Um, yeah, that's what it is. So that's what we've done. Um, you guys may have known uh, already that we were awarded the, cert, uh, the um, Excellence in Economic Development Award through the International Economic Development Council. We competed against four countries. There were 500 applicants and we won the silver award for best media, best new media for our website. So that's huge for us. It, it really puts us on the map with uh, companies all over the world. So that was big for Ohio County. Absolutely. And then uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys the, the workforce attraction video that we did complete. Is that the video that y'all won the award for? This is the video. No, this we won the award for the website. website. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you get the microphone close to yeah, That's where the opportunities are. I'm sure that's what they used to tell us. I can't get this microphone out.
world we're going to work doesn't take an hour in bumper to bumper traffic. The world we're going to work could be walking to the living room. Or to the field in your backyard. actually know the people you meet on the street. It's quality of life without the sacrifices that come with the rat race. It's a better life. So that's the long version of it. There's also a 30 second cut and a 15 second cut that we've used on social media, but that is, that is the video that is aimed at uh, attracting uh, the younger generation of workforce. If you notice one of them was uncrafted uh, uh, candy streets from Baker Town, is one of the ones that we did a uh, startup loan for, you know, through the Bobby Mom. And I don't know where Bo noticed it or not, but our high view park was in there. So really, I really like that set cut. Yeah, the, the light that was in that video is out on Peabody. A lot of people have asked me about that. Um, but the water's really nice, so it was great for the video. So that's why we chose that spot. So, one more slide. Oh, that's okay. You guys have it in front of you. Um, so, as you saw, Christina has completed uh, the basic economic development course and uh, several other um, courses towards economic development and I, I'd like to stress that she is not an assistant or a secretary Christina is an economic development specialist and I think that it's uh, it would be good for us to start to consider her wage scale as such um, I don't know where the funding is or I don't even think that we need to talk about that at this point but I, I do want to start considering uh, what we are, how we are paying her because um, her qualifications are well beyond how she's being paid and maybe, maybe beyond uh, you know the title that we've given her. Um, but at the time that we gave her that title, uh, we required that someone that was the uh, executive director's assistant or uh, the assistant executive director uh, would have a bachelor's degree in business. Um, and I think that with the current uh, amendments to the bylaws being considered, uh, we need to rethink that because um, she is more than uh, an executive assistant. She does economic development right along with me, and it's a lot of a lot of skills and a lot of qualifications that you need in order to do what she does. Um, so I just want to mention that and start to consider that, and we can talk about that further later. I don't want to call you guys out in the middle of court for that, but I do want to start pushing in that in the right direction I think as an economic development team we should be uh, setting the examples for how we want people to be paid um, in this county and I think that would be a, a great start and I know we've already started in some other areas but I think that um, that's one that we need to reconsider for sure very quickly I will talk to you guys about that workforce study because I did get the final report today so I did include it in this packet here all these copies of certifications, you can skip right through those. I just wanted you guys to have a copy of what uh, I listed up there. But we can go right to the page that is, let me get to it and I'll show you what it looks like. It looks like this right here. And the uh, labor market strengths that we have were identified as, uh, and I'll just, I'll just talk for a few things. We have two, five, two times the manufacturing labor compared to the national average. We have 15 times the national average of people employed as pourers and casters in metal. 
We have eight times the national average of people employed as metal refining, furnace operators, and tenders. And let me be clear, this is our labor market area. This is not talking about Ohio County specifically. It's talking about all of the areas where we pull labor from and we send labor to. Um, we have four times the national average of people employed as, as welders. That's huge for manufacturing. They usually want to know how many welders we have in the area and where all of our welding shops are located whenever we do um, site selection visits. So we needed that information. Of course, our location is a strength. You guys see the map there. But if you flip on to the, let's see, second page, the back of the second page, At the bottom, it says our industrial labor growth over the past five years, um, and I'll just go over the top three. We had 64% growth in textile knitting and weaving machine setters, operators, and tenders. 50% growth in textile winding, twisting, and drawing out machine setters, operators, and tenders. And 36% growth in aircraft cargo handling supervisors. That list goes on and on on the next page. I won't go over all of those. You guys can look at them, but on the next page at the bottom, it says surplus of manufacturing labor. It notes that as a strength of our labor market area, and it gives you the numbers of people in our area that are actually working in those jobs for employers that have at least 500 employees. So that doesn't represent all of those people. It just represents the employers that have 500 plus employees, so very large employers. And basically what this sheet you're looking at is, is the workforce story that we would uh, present to site selectors if they, uh, or when they meet with us. And then the last page there is uh, data that is pulled from the KY stats and our Zoom prospector with the Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development. And it shows that we have a total population in a 60 mile radius of 1.1 million people. That means that we are no longer considered rural when it comes to site selection and industries. We don't have to say, uh, you can come here, but we only have 24,000 people, and uh, you know, your labor market is us, Ohio County. We are a very large labor market, just like a city is. We just have to look beyond our borders at our actual labor market area. Um, we're projected to grow to 1.14 uh, by two, uh, 2026. Our total working age population from 20 to 49 years is 425,544 people. The total unemployed in our labor market area currently and currently actively looking for work is 25,148 people. Total employed in production occupations, 43,255 people with an average wage of 39,000, a little over $39,000. Transportation is 32,993 people, and the total number of manufacturing employees within a 45 minute drive time of Beaver Dam is 27,017 people. And we have 399 people living within a 60 mile radius of Beaver Dam who have engineering backgrounds and engineering degrees. All of that means that we do have the labor force that is necessary to support our existing and new uh, business. But the other information that I have with this workforce study that's not included in there, because it's a lot, um, shows us what we have to pay in order to draw from our, our total uh, labor market area. So whenever we have a company come here, we're gonna be able to say, if you want to attract that many people, if you wanna attract 3,000 people with those qualifications, this is the level that you're gonna have to pay in production to attract them. So, is there any questions? You guys have any questions for me? I just want to say thank you and congratulations. Yeah, uh, congratulations. And you too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Next, we have uh, uh, Judeo. It's going to tell us what we need to do here. Brenda. And Justin's. Brenda, I'm Brenda sorry. Brenda made it back. Brenda made it back. Judeo's name's on there. It says Judeo on there, though. And, uh, I know, but she made it back. Brenda had a doctor's appointment. We didn't know she'd make it back in town. Okay, every three years, we have to submit a bid to grad for the services. And last time I did it, and one of the magistrates said I should bring it here before I do it. So here it is. Everybody wants to review it. 
<laughs> Give it to Larry. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of pain. He just been thumbing through it. I've been through it. It's 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 above board. It's what we need to do. This is the key. I'm going to have to take the word for it. <laughs> Providing. So uh, I think we probably need a motion to uh, show that she didn't present it to her and authorize it to me and her to sign the I'll make a motion. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Larry Camp. Is there any further discussion? They know all folks say aye. Aye. Hold like sign. Motion carries. Brenda, if you don't care, next next time condense that down. Pardon? Condense that. About two pages. Condense that book down to about. I'll just give you a copy of it. You can read it. She'll mail it to you. All right. Most of you do. A little humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moving on, do we have any committee reports? Of course, you know we Thank met you. this afternoon on the uh, ARPA committee, which is already reported. We passed a motion on it. Has any other committees met since the last meeting? I do tell you, Sam, the, before, at, at 430 next meeting, just before this meeting, you and Joe and the rest of the uh, Wage Committee need to meet. Uh, the two things on the agenda that I put and anything else that y'all put. You say I'm sure maybe, but I had two things to bring to you. We, we want to plan this other one up here with the uh, well, Miranda could call y'all and see when your dates are available, then get with her. Miranda, will you call them and I get the later this week and set up for next week? <laughs> okay. Better yet, what day works best for you since you're both here? That's uh, really tomorrow. Or from the calendar. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty flexible anytime. Hey, Jerry, you good any afternoon or? Sure. I mean, what yeah. time? You be in? 3.34, what time? Uh, yeah, be fine. Anytime. Uh, I'm good any, any time this week. Okay. 3.30 or later. Hey, so, sure. but you, you can call them tomorrow and tell them, can't you? Yep. You get with Joey and what? She'll call Bob and Travis. I think diplomatic has got us nowhere. Well, here's kind of what I think, too. I, I really, I'm like Sam, I think we all ought to be on there to know our displeasure. Well, you did with your resolution. But this is to say, uh, I've been accused of being uh, uh, nasty with them and unreceptive to the point that uh, Kim called up uh, the other judge executive. He left me out, and here I am, the host county. I mean, that's, that's how disrespectful we've got. So when new eyes and look at it, so they couldn't ever come back and say, well, it's somehow our fault that this broke down. I'm going to hear it for yourself. Okay. Yeah. But like you do, I think it needs to be sooner than later. Yeah. And then that, that's good. Okay. That uh, That's set up. Any other committees to report? If not, we'll go straight to the magistrate's comments. I don't have anything, Judge. Jason? No, thank you. Joe? No, not at this time. Okay. No, certainly don't. Uh, how are we on the black coffee? It's actually coming along really well. Uh, they're, they're pretty much, uh, I believe he said he'd like one more job on the uh, uh, flex roads, and so then he'll be starting on the ones that y'all give him. Are so. uh, they going to be able to get them all before? Yes. Yes. David, while we're on that subject, are they... Uh, I know they've been doing some patching on 69 between Lake Worth and Dundee. Is that is that going to happen this year, do you think? It was supposed to, Larry. But everything the state's done has been behind. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I met Scotty down there on some issues with uh, Rockport, and he, had, he, had, he was going to get back with me on this. And he had called me, Chris had, but I told him to submit it as an email for y'all. Did y'all get anything yet on that? I was out of town last week, so you know what? I don't there was, there was, okay. no, I don't. I don't reach back out on that because it, that was the week before last week. But I kind of normally get back on some of that pretty quick. That's why while you while you're up, 
the Harrises are here. Okay. And they're interested in us moving forward with the boat ramp. I was wondering if we should bid it again. I think we need to bid it again because everything has changed so much on prices. It's, it's, not, the, it's not the boat ramp, it's just boat dock. I know, that's why it's right. right. boat dock. Yeah. Uh, if we keep getting questions about it, it's been going on. And that, and that, and that the other two avenues that I had on that, actually being able to buy some, mm -hmm. we had a line on some, uh, uh, the structure was good, but there were used ones that I thought I was gonna be able to get from down there at uh, Kentucky Lake. But since then, that place has gone up for sale and I've been, routed around to several different people and they, they've yet to get back with me. I thought that was going to be a really good line to get a uh, real cheap structure and then just put a new decking on it. But they have, uh, they've not followed back up with my communications with them. We'll, we'll just check out and see if we find somebody else. Okay. We'll work out. Okay, there's anything. Part of that project though, uh, Scotty's just going to look at we had always said if we had enough left over, we would we would still pay that. Oh, uh, the boat ramp parking lot. Yes. It's down there, at least the first so many places. It's down there next to the water edge where it gets cracked up, so they're supposed to be getting us a price on that too. Yeah, but I haven't got those others. Um, but okay. if you talk to them, make sure you relay it too. Okay. But I'll, I'll, I'll call them. I'll be talking to them. Talking about Sherwood Drive too. They grind down the project they got. Yeah. I'm going to confirm get that and make sure it gets done this year. Okay. And uh, it's not been started out okay. yet. Um, also, we got a citizen thank you from an individual on Herbert Road that says the blacktop looks great. They really appreciate all your hard work. Well, it's good to hear thank you once in a while. Yeah, that's the first one we got. <laughs> How many years you been? Yeah. Once in 30 years, that's pretty yeah. good. But uh, appreciate your thank you. Get that, you want to frame that? Yeah. Can you do a, just a frame, take out that frame for us? I'll do my best. Does anybody in general public have anything for the good of this body? If not, we're adjourned. Oh, I have a question. Do I? Do I? I'm, I'm, no, you, you'll sit down for this. <laughs> uh, you're all house bill money that you're going to use for blacktop. I need quotes on that so I can start the process with the state. Well, some of it is done. Some of it is not out. Okay. I guess I just haven't gotten it. You need to know his role? Yeah. I've turned mine in. No. No. On the whole separate side. Oh. This is on the whole severance money.